Have you ever wondered why planes don't fly faster than they currently do? Well, today we are going to unravel this crazy mystery of aviation. Picture this. You're on a plane, looking out the window, and you can't help but wonder why it's not flying through the sky like a superhero. Let's embark on a journey to understand the science and engineering behind the speed of planes. In 1967, a flight from New York to Los Angeles took 5 hours and 43 minutes. Nowadays, that same trip takes 6 hours and 27 minutes, which is 45 minutes longer than before. This isn't just about one airline. It turns out planes have intentionally become slower over the past 50 years. Let's figure out why and why making them faster has been tricky. We all love speed, right? Imagine reaching your destination in half the time it currently takes. It sounds like a dream, doesn't it? Well, it turns out, speed is not just about the thrill. It's also about efficiency and safety in the world of aviation. Now, you might have heard of the Concorde, the legendary supersonic passenger jet that could break the sound barrier. Factor on the day for which Britain and France and the rest of the world had waited so long. Exciting flying supersonic, and it's always exciting to get to New York before you've left. Anything faster is called supersonic and anything anything slower is called subsonic. Today's planes fall into the subsonic category, but why aren't we all flying at supersonic speeds today? There was a time when people thought making planes faster would be a great idea. British Airways took a shot at it with the Concorde, a supersonic plane used for commercial flights, especially between London and New York. The paper dark jetliner conceived jointly by Britain and France to shrink the world and cut air journey times in half. Unfortunately, it didn't work out well. Let's dig into why and understand why making planes faster isn't as simple as it sounds. These planes were super fast, covering the distance from London to New York in just three hours. It seemed like a fantastic way to get to your destination in no time, but there were some issues with these supersonic planes. First, their fuel consumption was high. They used about 46.85 pounds of fuel per mile, while normal planes only used 18.7 pounds per mile. It's important to understand that planes are designed to operate within a specific range of speeds that balance fuel efficiency and safety. Going faster requires more fuel, and while it might get you to your destination quicker, it comes at a significant cost. Another drawback is that supersonic planes could only manage 14 miles per gallon of fuel, while standard planes could go up to 104 miles on the same amount of fuel. Not only were they fuel thirsty, but they also hit the pocket hard. British Airways charged more than $7,500 for a trip from London to New York, a hefty amount at that time. Despite targeting a high-class audience, people didn't love them. The planes were designed to be small and fast, but that made them uncomfortable for passengers. They could only accommodate 100 people, whereas regular planes had larger capacities. Another drawback was the sonic boom, a thunder-like noise produced when these supersonic planes traveled faster than the speed of sound. All these factors made the supersonic journey less appealing to travelers, even with its impressive speed. Think about when a fighter jet whooshes by, and you hear that loud sound on the ground. Well, these supersonic Concorde planes did the same thing, and people on the ground had to put up with that booming noise. This wasn't just a bother for people on the ground, it also caused trouble for the airlines. Airlines were facing difficulties because despite the increasing number of flights, their revenue was decreasing. The sonic boom issue added to their problems, making it a tough situation with increasing costs and decreasing revenue. Planes don't retire based on how many years they work upon their cycles, how many times they take off and land. Usually, planes have a lifespan of around 44,000 cycles, after which they retire. Now, when these fancy supersonic planes came out, they completed a six-hour flight in just three hours. Sounds cool, right? But here's the catch. More flights meant these planes aged faster. Concorde was crossing the Atlantic almost completely empty. Added to that, maintenance costs were soaring, and so in April 2003, Concorde's retirement was announced. British Airways and Air France will retire the plane in six months' time. Despite investing a significant amount in developing supersonic planes, people still preferred regular planes due to their lower cost. Supersonic planes couldn't bring down their expenses, 
mainly because it was pretty expensive to keep them running. The initial idea behind creating supersonic planes was to cross the Atlantic Ocean in less time. It might sound fun to cross the Atlantic in three hours, but that convenience comes with a hefty price tag of up to $7,500. Meanwhile, regular planes took about $200-250 to cross the Atlantic, making them a more profitable choice for airlines. The Concorde, for all its glory, faced limitations due to the sonic boom, and eventually, economic factors led to its retirement. So, when an aircraft flies faster than the speed of sound, it creates disturbances. Okay, so speed comes with a cost, and breaking the sound barrier has its challenges. But why can't we just design planes that are more aerodynamic to fly faster? Designing planes is like solving a puzzle. We want them to be speedy, like a sleek arrow in the sky. But here's the catch. We also need to think about other things. Passengers need comfy seats, there's cargo to carry, and we want the plane to work like a well-oiled machine. It's a delicate balance, my friends. Each piece, whether it's the plane's shape or the way it carries stuff, plays a role in making it work smoothly. It's not just about speed, it's about solving a puzzle for the plane to perform at its best. Airlines and engineers carefully calculate the optimal speed to ensure a balance between efficiency and operational costs. Our current aviation technology has reached impressive heights, but there are still limitations. Improving engine efficiency, developing materials that can withstand higher speeds, and addressing environmental concerns are just a few of the challenges that engineers are actively working on. It's a constant race against time and innovation. The future looks promising. Engineers and researchers are exploring innovative concepts like hypersonic travel, where planes could travel at speeds beyond Mach 5. Imagine reaching the other side of the world in just a few hours. While it's still in the early stages of development, the dream of faster, more efficient air travel is very much alive. And there you have it, guys. The mystery of why planes don't fly faster, unraveled. From the delicate balance of speed, efficiency, and safety to the challenges of breaking the sound barrier, we've taken you on a journey through the skies. Remember, aviation is a field of constant innovation, and who knows what the future holds for the speed of flight. Thanks for joining us on this adventure. If you enjoyed our exploration of aviation mysteries, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to stay updated on all our future videos.